Welcome to the Well Played wow. DLC podcast, Australia's juiciest gaming podcast. I am Zach Jackson. Joining me is James Wood. Hi, gamers. And also Adam Ryan. Hello. And Nathan Hennessy. Hey. How we going? How we going? Every hey. week it's different and it kills me every week. I love oh, it. It was the pause. It was the pause for that one. That was like, it was like an actor that didn't quite realize that it was their cue. <laughs> so they were like, oh, oh, it's me. Could you Hello. repeat the question? <laughs> How are we all going this lovely evening? Very well. Good. Great. Ooh. Great. So positive. Got a little bit yeah. of a diverse mix there. Mm. Yeah. You know me. Okay. All about diversity. That's us, yeah. That is us. Diverse That's podcast. it. Yeah. Four Ooh. white guys on a podcast. That's what it screams, mm-hmm. isn't it? Two beards, two mows. Yeah, it's all over the place. Let's go. All right. So. Yes. We have some exciting news. Actually, it's not really news. It's not even. I don't know why I framed it as news. But uh, you got my heart racing now. Let's go. <laughs> Nathan came and uh, saw the abode. Oh, done. Oh. oh. Came over and is the uh, toilet cracked? <laughs> I don't. He didn't even allow me to see it. Believe it or uh, not, Ta- yeah, took me this... for a tour of the house. Left the bathroom yeah. off limits. This guy. Yeah, can't even lay reason. Too risky. Yeah. Did, yeah. Didn't want to tempt you, mate. No. <laughs> I thought you had something to be ashamed of. Didn't realise it was me. <laughs> no. I was the shame. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nathan popped around and uh, picked up a couple of little treats. And uh, we went and shared a little coffee down the road and Nathan had a little panini. It was great. great These are all euphemisms, by the way. Mm. Oh, I didn't want to be the one to bring that up, but it definitely, yeah, all of this sounds dodgy as hell. Mm. And you know what? It was a lovely... Day. So now we can start a podcast by going, oh, the, 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 weather's not, the, the weather fucking sucks, guys. No, the weather was all right. It's been okay lately. Had a couple of nice ones. Has Zach been was wearing shorts. Whoa, I had the Ooh. pins out. I know. He was showing off just for me. I know, right? Mate, got to look the best for the best. Oh, it's so positive. Look at us go. I know. I know. It's a, it's a new podcast. It's new us. So... Here we go. Let's uh let's keep the positivity rolling. I want to know. I was thinking about this today. What's everyone's about favorite Xbox. fruit juice? Oh. <laughs> easy oh. cranberry. Oh, oh. Look, okay, look. Easy cranberry number one, but I do love pineapple and I love a- apple juice as well. But cranberry would be easily the number one. Okay. I think oh, I'm basic bitch as orange because I love orange with a bit of pulp, but pineapple is oh. up there too. I'll I'll get on board with the the pineapple. It is a good time. Mm. Mm. Nathan, yes, fruit juice. They all make makes me, me shit. shit. Oh, I see. oh, of course, of course. Sorry. Yep, understood. Pineapple juice, right? Okay. All right. I uh, I've recently rediscovered orange juice, so I'm having like a real basic bitch era, and it is um. It's just the best. It's just it the is. best juice. Ice cold, a little bit of pulp. Oh. So, do you like the pulp? You're a pulp kind of, yeah. kind of guy. Yeah, I do. I'm not, I do. I'm not it's about the pulp. King. It is. Although pineapple would also be my other choice. So it's good to know we're all essentially the same person. <laughs> There's that diversity again, boys. <laughs> hey, I, did, hey, I, choose, I said cranberry. So that's true. You did. And apple. Uh, all right. All apple right. Is like a shining kid's star. Juice. Cranberry only goes with rock and okay, mate. Apple's Apple is Nintendo a, of um, a juice. Yeah, exactly. oh, I was going to say, it's what you'd be drinking when you're playing the Switch. Oh, God damn it. Oh, good. Exclusively Very kids. good. Lovely. You not a fan of cranberry? Goes with rock and vodka, mate. It does, actually. Mm. Quite tart. Mm. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that is the word they use. I think, I think that's is, what I like it? about it. Yep. You can specifically <laughs> use the word tart. In the same sentence, I think it it? Just, it's just that's not that's not that little bit of aftertaste. It just mm. I've got, I think, like so it reminds you of you a little yeah. bit, a little bit. I also use you to clear UTIs as well. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Adam laughs knowingly. Whoa. Hmm. I right. thought that was really good, James. Keep that was. Thank you. Thank you. That I appreciate was. it. I clearly did because it paralyzed me for a few seconds. <laughs> oh, good. I had to hold it back. All right. Let's get stuck straight into the video games. Anyone want yes. to talk about anything that they've been playing that's not for the content? It is that time oh, okay. of year we're in the content trenches, so yeah. <laughs> no one, no one. What are you, what are you um, playing for fun? My deranged friend and I, who we did the Resident Evil Platinums together, uh, we are now oh, doing no. Revelations, uh, the DS oh, game ported fun. to PS4, PS5. Uh, no, I nope. like those. It's not <laughs> really because that's not yeah, a very it's, long it's game. It's bad. Uh, no, but the raid mode is like forty hours of bullshit. Uh, oh shit! Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah, would oh. not, wouldn't recommend it. Revelations two, I'm very excited for. I'm, I'm sure that will hold up in a good way. Revelations one is like a weird hot mess. Uh, it's mm. there's elements of it I like. I think that it would make for arguably the best remake that they could do at this point. Because uh, I think the boat setting is really cool. I think people want Chris and Jill back together. I think you could, you'd rework it. Obviously, the actual story is kind of dog shit, but the bones of it are pretty decent. So I think you could do something with it, but um. That's that's pretty much all I've been playing. It's not content, I think. Hang on, so you didn't you didn't like the PS one? Ah, oh, PS one, fucking the PS three version. The, the of Revelations one. The one I'm playing right now. Yeah. No, not really. Hmm. Like I, I see, I see some merit to it, uh, but I think it controls like a worse five, uh, and the story is like genuinely nonsensical. Hmm. Yeah. You get that. I, I played it back on the 3DS, and I thought it was oh, yeah. like okay as a 3DS game, but mm -hmm. I didn't think it was a yeah. great Resident Evil game. Yeah, exactly. Without the handheld gimmick and the uh, the gimmicky 3D, it's just mm. a bit is, of a nothing. Is Revelations Claire or Jill? Jill. It's uh Jill and some two, bear. Two is Claire, isn't it? Two is Claire. Two is Claire. Yeah, yeah two okay. is Claire. Claire and Moira. Moira. Shout yeah, out. fuck it right up the ass. That's a quote from the game. Sorry. <laughs> don't, mate, don't apologize. All righty then. Don't apologize for Capcom's words. Like if it's uh, verbatim, I didn't you know. write it. If the shoe fits. That's, that's it. it. It's either that or a meme I saw. I, I don't actually know. So, mm. um, yeah. Well, I'm going to say it's in the game. Thank you. Can we yeah. get a fact oh, check? Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, no, I might look I'm that up while someone that. else talks about content. I Google it all the it's... time. It's fine. <laughs> Adam, you got um, anything you've been playing? Yeah, I I went on a bit of a weird a, a weird tangent this weekend of playing um not Naughty Dog Sucker Punch games. Uh, I downloaded Infamous Second Son again and played like three hours of that, and it just depressed me that they're not doing anything with that IP because it's one of my favourite game franchises ever. It is, mate. It, it's it. I feel it for you, mate. Me. Like I do feel for you, even though I'm not a not a fan. I feel for you. The game's still fucking good too. It doesn't look anywhere near as good as I remember. I was reminded that it is a like an eleven year old game, and it came out around the time the PS4. I remember it looking so crisp and clear, but we've we've moved on. But yeah, still great. Uh, I then moved on to play like two hours of Ghost of Tsushima the next day. That game does look great still, uh, and is great. But I also bought a physical copy of Dragon's Dogma 2, or as mm -hmm. far as I'm aware, is Dragon's Dogma 1, because they seem to be allergic to the number 2. And I'm guessing there's a reason, and I'm excited to find out uh, what the reason is. Yeah, that game, are. very much like it's going to take me some time to fall in love with it, mm -hmm. because it's like its combat and movement is different to what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. to, for, for reference, I did play like maybe an hour of the first game, but that was when it first came out a long time mm -hmm. ago now. Can't really remember. Mm -hmm. um, but just the world and the like old timey bullshit speak like it's yeah, um, I'm on board. I'm very keen to play more, but you can you, I'm from the reaction I got from you two. I'm guessing there is a reason that the splash screen doesn't say Dragon's Dogma 2. Who's to yeah, say? You love it. Uh, yeah, 
It was a big weekend of me just playing random shit. It was a good time. Nice. A veritable smorgasbord. Oh. Oh, I nice, am so pleased to report that it is a real quote from Moira in the game, <laughs> uh, alongside such others as, I mean, what in the moist barrels of fuck? Nope. No. Mm. Uh, so that's, that's very exciting. This that's... bitch stuck a needle in me. Okay. Go jump I mean... on a dildo, boss. What the fuck? Yeah, uh, this I, is I, a I, Resident I, Evil game. This is a Resident Evil game. Yeah, all right. And why is yeah. she not like the main protagonist? Why exactly. is she relegated well, to a side story? Like one of them. But um, I'm going to finish with come out from behind that glass so I can choke a god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's how oh, I initiate my... foreplay. Mm. Yeah, right? Mm. You in the shout, babe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, um, I have started uh, playing FC25, so it's a, you know. Nice. How exciting. Um, this is football yeah, Mr. Club. FC doing? Football Club 25, <laughs> EAFC, what, sorry? I said, <laughs> how's Mr. <laughs> FC doing? That, that's that's a throwback. That's about it. Who is Mr. FIFA? There. Who is uh-huh. Mr. FIFA? That was a good and where, and where has he gone? <laughs> Where in the know. world is Mr. FIFA? Anyway, we will talk more about that later. But yeah, I mean, it's FIFA, right? FC. Uh, I mean, well, sorry, not. sorry, sorry. That's, no, it's that's not. You're right. Decidedly not. You are yeah. very right. Um, and I have also been playing a horror game called Numata. I think is how you'd pronounce that. P N E U M A T A. This is the one where I played the preview, and I was actually quite enjoying it it's like it's like a mixture of silent hill and re like you can see that this solid developers you know he uh he's obviously got inspiration from these two games the review build is out uh, the game is actually out now um but oh yeah yeah um i haven't steam got to the part is... yeah what does steam say i haven't looked what does steam say uh 26 reviews sitting on mostly negative currently. Oh. Read, us, read us one of the reviews. Yeah, let me let me find one. Fresh off the press. Look, positive, positive. I tried. Here's the problem with making games in inspiration of Resident Evil 6. Your bar is Resident... Oh, sorry, Resident Evil 7. Your bar is Resident Evil 7. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, fair. Voice acting is very bad. The forced it cut is. scenes almost kill the mood. They're jarring. The lighting yes. outside is borderline pitch black. Correct. Uh, yeah, it sounds a little bit rough. Oh, and yeah. all of the aspects are seemingly from the Unreal Marketplace, which, uh, you know, hmm. whatever. Eh, I, I don't really mind that. I think it's there's there's some cool atmosphere in there. Um, it just doesn't play very well, and I'm actually mm. stuck at the moment. And the game has these annoying... Like sound effects. So there's mm. a like when you're right at the start, there's like this. It's almost like a smoke alarm, not smoke alarm, but like a, a smoke alarm beeps like every like fifteen seconds. You, you get this like beep like thing like in the game, and it's really fun. and when you walk walking around trying to like explore and search and find shit, you know, and kind of get that little bit of tension. You hear this fucking beep every every you know, 15, 20 seconds, you're like, God, just, and there's this like leaky, like tap or something. And like, but the tap is always like next to you. So it's like, you go out of the bathroom, the bathroom's like on the other side of the house, but regardless, you can still hear this fucking tap dripping. Um, and then in the sequence that I'm in now, there's this TV that plays like clown music and it just, so you have to explore all these different like derelict places that are in this town and you can just hear this fucking clown music, like going, this like circus music going nonstop. It's just so, it just it just takes you completely out of the the immersion, right? You know how some games are really really good at just saying not saying nothing, sorry, but you know with no or next to no um soundscape, it's just like it's the yeah. it's the wind, it's the rain, it's the it's the creaks. Um, you got this fucking annoying clown circus music. Anyway, um, so now I'm at like I'm kind of lost. I think I'm not like I know kind of where to go but i don't know if the game is bugged or because i met this door that i can't open but it's not there's no like key to it there's like other doors that have keys and there's this 
So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I push on. But the the preview broke. So I was actually quite. Ex- I was kind of enjoying the preview, and then it just it just broke. So, um, yeah, I'm playing on PS5. I, too, by the way, oh, and I was gonna, gonna I was gonna ask that. Oh, even the trailer for it has frame rate that goes up the ass. Um, I was gonna say that it like it looks very, like it looks pretty good visually. But I think I was thinking about this the other day. I think Unreal Engine 5 has broken my brain a little bit because seemingly everything built and it gives me that false sense of like, oh, this game is, you know, going to look going to be pretty decent. And then, you know, looks aren't everything is maybe what I'm trying to get at. But Mm. Unreal Engine 5 has we don't know. Set an expectation. Otherwise, wouldn't. But no, we're all beautiful souls here. Some of us, not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyway, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But that has pretty much been my content. Nice. Yeah. All right, Nathan. Are we going to dive straight in? You wanna go we're going in head first. Mm. Alright. Well it sounds like we don't have a more elegant segue than that. So we're gonna talk about I've been about... trying to think of one, but <laughs> Yeah. Ah, alright. It's passed. Let's talk about Zelda. Specifically, uh this week sees the release of The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. I'm sure most listeners would be aware by now. This is the uh this is the Zelda we play as Zelda. Taking the top-down stylings of the very the, the more traditional old old legend of zelda games um like a link to the past or link's adventure more recently which was uh made, remade by this same team and it sports the same art style where everything's sort of top down very colorful and all your objects and assets and and uh, creatures look like little plastic figurines and it's actually really charming so this is one of the, I suppose this is probably going to be one of the last major tentpole releases for Zelda on the Nintendo Switch. And it's very impressive. Because we play as Zelda this time around, and the land of Hyrule has been sort of, parts of her being gobbled up by these rifts. And along as this has happened, uh, the adventure of the series that we've typically played as up until now, Link, He's been sucked up into one of these rifts and Hyrule needs a hero. So this time it's up to the Priestess of uh, Legend or Priestess of Wisdom, something like that. There's a, there's a lot of talk of the legend and it's mythos around yeah. who Zelda's destined to be and now she's going to be the hero we need. Um, and she's uh, very quickly blamed by forces that have emerged from these rifts. Uh They've taken copies of the king and other important figures of the kingdom and are pretending that they are, in fact, the authentic rulers of the nation and have blamed Zelda as being the catalyst for all this mishap that's occurred because she's a powerful priestess. She's been up to some funny business and this is all her fault. So this is a a slightly different approach to the series up until now, how these games normally begin where... Link wakes up and now an adventure is thrust upon him. This is a lot more like shit has happened and Zelda's got to really get a move on and uh, she's got to clear her name at the same time as figure out how she's going to save the kingdom. Uh, While she's in prison, a mystical force comes to her in the form of this little glowing orb called Tri, who's going to be basically talking on her behalf for the adventure because in typical Zelda fashion, ironically... Zelda, who often talks in other Zelda games, won't be talking here. Silent protagonist this time. So so Tri's going to do the talking for her. Tri also gives her a staff called the Tri Rod. And between those two, she's now got the ability to manipulate objects around her, as well as create these things called Echoes, the titular Echoes of Wisdom. Uh, These are effectively copies of anything that, she's able to quote unquote overcome in the world so if she's able to break an object for instance that's an object that she's able to replicate if she's able to defeat an enemy that's an enemy she's also able to replicate and it will behave 
um, as that enemy would, but in her defense. So, uh, and this is quite different to how Zelda games normally play out, where Link just hacks and slashes his way through combat, just swinging his sword and putting up his shield. Adam's got his hand up. The Hello, Adam yours. from Well Played here. Um, I've not played a Zelda game in a while, but mm. this one kind of caught my attention because it's different. It's not just it like is. Link out swinging swords and smashing pots and whatnot. Mm. The That mechanic looked really cool in the trailers. Like you can kind of make a duplicate of like a body of water to put yourself out if you're on fire or Absolutely. like build little... As you're playing the game, like how does how does that work? Is there like a massive fuck off wheel of like the different things that you can choose from? Is it contextual to like when you're in this area, you have these to choose from? How does how does that come about when you're actually like in gameplay? That's that's a big point of uh, my review actually. So, as you can imagine, if you're able to create copies of virtually every destructible objects in every enemy you're going to build quite a catalog of replicatable assets uh. how do you navigate that in gameplay and the developers have gone look we're just going to copy and this happens a lot uh we're going to copy design features from breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom whether they work for this game or not and in this case 100 <laughs> percent does not what do you see in those oh. games so for instance uh if you want to switch weapon in those games it's one of the directional buttons. You hold it in and it just creates a, a tile pane that you sing, mm -hmm. that you go through one by one and it, you can kind of scroll your way through a horizontal list. Uh, so they've copied that and they've basically put every single asset onto one button. You hold it and you can spend up to 20 seconds every single time you need to summon an echo. 20 seconds scrolling through this motherfucking menu that you cannot sort. There's no categories. There's It just goes fucking have fun with it. And there are also duplicates of duplicates. So you might get a Deku plant, which is a popular, like it's, it's, a, it's a popular Zelda monster. And there might be multiple levels of that same single enemy. And because we're talking dozens of enemies and dozens of objects, you end up getting duplicates of duplicates of duplicates that all end up buffering and filling out and bloating this one single menu that you're supposed to, on the fly of combat, in a boss battle or trying to flick through puzzles, be able to switch flu on the on the fly. There's no the mm. game has bothered not bothered to create any kind of organizational solution to make it elegant during gameplay. Unfortunately, but that is only one of the few times that the game actually slips up because it's a joy to play. It's a lot of fun. Because what the trailer promises, if you've seen the trailers for this game, is that you'll be able to freely do quite wacky things, stacking different objects on top of one another, putting different um, enemies or characters summoned that have particular behavior types and watching them play together. They've copied a lot of uh, dynamic systems from Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild, such as uh, weather systems and fire propagation and things like this. So this is completely new to the top-down Zelda that you could um, summon a fire creature in a field of weeds it's very popular in the zelda games that you'll go into a grassy field and it will be full of weeds and link's going to go around and do your gardening zelda doesn't do gardening she just throws a molotov at the motherfucker watch the fire <laughs> spread it's really cool <laughs> and it leads to a lot of interesting interactions in the world that we just haven't seen in the top down zelda so this is doing I, i'm going to go out on a limb here boys and say this is doing for traditional top down zelda what Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom did for 3D Zelda. It's a big claim, boys, but I think that sure. bloody well does it. Go on, James. So does that mean that we've had a return to dungeons? We've had a return to dungeons as well. Hey. So this is because we're talking a traditional Zelda adventure in in terms of the old old school top down, we're still seeing a lot of that traditional structure. So you're gonna have five you're gonna have more than five dungeons. I can't say how many. You're gonna have more than five dungeons. Uh, the game's going to let you approach them in any way that you would like. And as you complete one, you're going to get so many interesting um, powers, echoes, objects that are going to really like almost feel like you're cheating on the next dungeon because it just seems too powerful. And your creative toolbox that you've now got because of one dungeon you did out of order or however you chose to do it, it's going to make you feel bonkers, super powerful and super creative in the next one. This game begs to be broken. 
it t- copies all the all the foundational design ideas of those big Breath of the Wild games and that somehow. So speedrunners are going to have a great time here because they're going to be able to break this game wide open from the get. And they're being, going to be encouraged to, just like they were in those other two games. It's going to take about 20 hours for most people to finish. So it's a much more condensed game. The game world is much more packed and focused and dense. Everything's there with a purpose. And if you decide to break it by summoning different kinds of echoes together to create weird physical contraptions and stuff, so be it. The game will bend. It doesn't break. It's it's, it's like that. So there is um. There, I actually I'll give you an example. The second dungeon I did in the game, I skipped the entire dungeon. Hooray for me! That's something I could do. I entered the dungeon, did some jiggery woo, some some woodoo crap with my echoes. Bing bam boom. Managed to make it straight to the end of the dungeon. I was like, holy shit! So, for everything I'm saying, for a Zelda fan, I'm sure it will be exciting. Um, yeah, there is one other issue, I suppose, before it's all just praise. Um, if anyone played the Link's Awakening remake, as I said earlier, very colourful, um, and the kind of plastic vinyl figures of how the characters and everything look, unfortunately it had a weird frame rate issue like throughout that game, even though there wasn't much fidelity on display but somehow whenever you were outside of a dungeon which are generally pretty small condensed square areas um, when you're in the overworld the game would just stutter 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 this game has that to the 10th degree like this game is, is never seen a smooth frame in its in its existence <laughs> this is a slideshow from start to finish really sad about that i'm not quite sure how that this is nintendo's kind of like managed to make it that this is now kind of their standard like we mm. saw it with pokemon and the fact that they still haven't fixed this from links links awakening it's it's weird it looks it's, rough yeah like i'd imagine that taking the problems of that engine from the same developer and then adding a bunch of like bullshit yeah. breath of the wild craziness on top of it would not bode well <laughs> for you're 100 um... right because it's as soon as you start chucking a couple of mm. independent do- dynamic echoes into the mix maybe you put a couple of summon a couple of enemies and you've got three characters moving on screen slideshow um so obviously as the game goes on you're going to start building your capacity to make more and more echoes and do greater and greater combinations of weird shit and then by the end of the game the game is just barely able to cook an egg on the switch at that point like yeah Mm. Which leads me to my one last issue. The game doesn't have a targeting system. Or it does and it doesn't. It has a single button. You've got to mash the uh, Z, the Z1 trigger or whatever and just hope and pray that it's going to lock onto the enemy that you're facing because it's also going to lock onto any object that's neutral, whether it's a pot, a vase, fucking plant, doesn't matter. It's also going to lock onto any echo that you've summoned, so any allied echo as well. And then it's also going to lock onto any enemy. So let's say you're in a, it's very, by the end of the game, it's very likely that you have 10 interactable assets in a single frame and you're trying to focus on one specific enemy because they're shielding another enemy. You got to keep mashing that lock on and hope that you manage to hold it when it hits on the right enemy because otherwise you're just going to keep cycling through and cycling through. The short of what I'm saying is, is there is not a fit for purpose targeting system here. Why is that important? Well, towards the end of the game, it starts to rely a little bit on precision in terms of how you solve certain combat puzzles. And you can't rely on precision when there's no assistance to try and guide you. There's no camera. There is no targeting system that works here. So that's just weird. So three three issues with this game. Graphics, uh, it's beautiful, but it doesn't run very well. There's no targeting system and or, or none that I think is, is fit for purpose. And the game has no way of managing the vast amount of echoes it gives to you in a way that's elegant on the run. Everything else, mm. though, is wonderful. So the dungeon design is very classic Zelda. You're going to be trying to get a, a map and, and, and then you're going to try and get a boss key, which is going to unlock the boss room. You beat the boss, the dungeon's done, go get the next one. Lots of side missions. They're very much taking inspiration from, as I said, those two last big 3D games. Uh, so you're going to be meeting the, a lot of the clans and that that you've seen from those games um, and filling out a, a quest journal. All the UI looks the same as those last two Zeldas, so it's going to be a very familiar transition. Um, and like I said, 20 hours. It's pretty tidy. Mm. I will now hand over to the floor. How are I, you feeling? 
I, I just, I, first I want to note, I think it's very funny that we're nearly eight years into the Switch's life cycle and nobody can remember what the shoulder buttons are called. Uh, every time I get oh, asked about no. it, I'm like, Z5? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, it's it's something. I'm not um, even certain on that. All right, I have, a, I have a quick question and then like, not a long one, but like a, a more James coded question after that. Uh, oh, how yeah. was the music? It is, I thought, brilliant. I thought that yeah. was such a strong part. Um, I mean, this is Zelda. So many Zelda games are really just riffing on kind of the same tunes. Mm. And this is also still doing that. But because we've now got the leading, the titular lady in the leading role, it's, they're kind of leaning into, a, I don't know, maybe a little bit of whimsy. It's a little bit more flary. I think it's fantastic. I really found the soundtrack hit throughout. It's got a new piece every dungeon a new piece for every little time that the sort of scenery changes and it's just very effortlessly elegant i loved it to bits very nice on the topic of that leading lady now being the leading lady uh mm. so obviously it's it's a huge gimmick right to to put her in that leading position it's something that i think a lot of fans have wanted for a while it's an excellent choice for an end of generation zelda where you can get a bit weird with it and experiment and whatnot agree more. um the way you've described the story earlier made it sound as if she was kind of being persecuted like a witch would have been basically because of her like magical abilities and whatnot does the game uh, look, it's Nintendo. I can't imagine they're going to say anything at all. But do you get the impression that the game is at least aware of the sort of gender expectations that come along with putting Zelda in elite position? Um, I think that the writers over at Nintendo are very good in being able to present this without any of those edges, if that makes sense. Mm, no, this is yeah. this is very uh, this is very sanded edged. Very soft-edged. Um, it's just a a rollicking adventure, really. So what I said at the start yep. there is really just the first hour, and then it kind of moves past that. Right. It, it resolves that arc or mm -hmm. that that complication quite early on in the beat, and then it Got all it. becomes about um, she really is the hero that we knew we wanted, and we should have trusted right. her all okay. along. She's going to get it done, and she does. Yeah. Oh, and I left out one thing. And, and if you've seen... This, this has been shown in a recent trailer after my preview, but she also has limited, no, not limited. She's got access to Link's arsenal. So if you feel the need mm. to hack and slash, she's got a hack and slash buttons and she's, a, and she's got the oh, full cool. access to, to Link's arsenal, whether it be bombs, arrows, sword and shield, she's got them. But you know what? The cat's out of the bag now. She can do Link better than Link. And <laughs> this whole other thing that's so vast and creative so Nintendo have have they, they can't the tooth you know the toothpaste can't go back in the tube now. It's going to be very mm. exciting to see where the series goes with a Zelda led Zelda because there can't not be more. Nice, Adam. Hello. On that note, would you like a like maybe a stealth action game with her as Sheik because I know that she's gotten in on the action oh. as uh, it's like, no spoiler in to say that's already here. Oh, really? Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we've got stealth action sequences in here. There, a lot mm. of what I'm seeing here looks like it. It may not be the best iteration of stealth action per se. It's there, and there's potential sure. for it to be a lot more interesting in the follow up. Yeah. Nice, cool. It's is very thoughtfully done. This game, I, I've been very impressed. Just a real shame that there's some very major technical shortcomings that mm. is going to really grind some people's gears i think because it's it's not n not unnoticeable it's very stark imagine how well it'll play on a ps5 pro you know oh i like that won't, <laughs> won't need to choose <laughs> so how we, if we've wrapped the discussion up and give a score i suppose mm -hmm. give it to us yeah i'm thinking this has to be a nine like at least a nine it's it's a, it's 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 superb territory we're talking here and i'm really splitting hairs to fault it, it was I had a really nice time with it. Nice. And I think Zelda fans will too. Sweet. Good stuff. Good work. All right, we've got one shout out this week. And that's from our good friend KV, who has reviewed Epic Mickey <clears throat> Rebrushed. And he says, although the new coat of paint and quality of life updates probably won't change the minds of anyone who didn't click with this oddity of a 3D platformer for the first time, 
Disney Epic Mickey Rebrush successfully recaptures the magic of the original, making it well worth a look in uh, both for fans and those that missed out on the Wii. Gives it an 8.5. So, well done. I actually want to play it after reading that review. So Mm. Mm. I'm really pleased that this kind of got a post-Wii redemption because mm. I didn't want to play this because it was a Wii exclusive. Now I'm kind of curious. This game, this game got a sequel, yeah, originally? Yeah, it did. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, right, right, right. Mm. I think it was a multi-platform sequel. Epic and Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool, cool, Yeah, cool. yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, head to James, who's got all the headlines. We do. We do. Well, I mean, maybe first let's head to uh, maybe a bit of a discussion of the PlayStation state of play. Insert sting. Yeah. Teeing well, myself up. Knocking it out talking... of the park. Okay. So before we head to the actual discussion, very, very quickly, PlayStation announced yep. the state of play. Yes, they did. Do we have any predictions quickly before we go to the... I'm all disoriented from time traveling, mate. Here I am right now. Now I'm in the future. Now I'm back here. It's fucking... So this is obviously PlayStation's uh, TGS show. They have... I think they've announced they're going to be at the actual event with hands-on stuff. Um, So what do we think? And they've uh, said in this this, uh, press release that it's going to be 30 uh, 30 games. 30 minutes and 20 games, including PSVR 2 titles um i don't know if it stipulated first and third party or just games coming to the ps5 no, it just said so, upcoming yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's just like games from around the world so it's yeah very <laughs> very funny. vague yeah. on that front cool all right what are we thinking very quickly give us one off the top of your heads can i give you two sure why not you said one mate come on i did but Fuck yourself i'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna give you two in mind metal gear solid delta will get a release date because that is going to be at TGS. Prick. Yeah, you know I would. Uh, and we're going to get more Death Stranding too, hundred percent. Oh, well, I think yeah. they've I think they've said that they're going to be at um, TGS, right? Kojima's at TGS. Yeah. They're doing. Oh, like mate, a Kojima's discussion or something. Gonna, mm. Yeah, they've been like kind of coy as to what he's actually going to be discussing. So yeah, I I figure Death Stranding two is going to be on the list. Cool. I'll go with RE9. We'll get a a reveal trailer. Whoa. Look at you go. Mm. Hmm. James? First person? Third person? Ooh, good question. Good question. Well, they've finished with the Ethan Winters Winters. story Mm. arc. So Mm -hmm. Hart wants to say third person. Head says first person. I think with the remakes, they'll keep using those as the third persons, but I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me either way if, if, if they went back to third person. Did we, I might be misremembering, but did we get DLC for Village where you could play in third person? Correct. Mm-hmm. Do we see that being like an ongoing thing? Like the games are kind of, they want to do the best of both worlds, so they include both? I think it depends I, on who the character is. That that like that's how I feel. Sure. Sorry, James, but because yeah. I feel, I feel like I didn't give a fuck about seeing Ethan Winters from 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 behind. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, mm. uh, my only thing is that it's not a best of both world. It's kind of like a worst of both. Uh, so oh, I sure. think that when they split their attention that way, both feel a bit weird. Uh, so I would rather they nail the first person or nail third person but don't cross streams just for the sake of it if it makes it a worse game. Yeah. You know what, fuck it. I'm I'm going third person. RE9 third person. Lock it in. I'll build on that. It's also going to be a return to, like, legacy bullshit. Umbrella will be teased. Uh, Chris is probably going to get teased. Maybe older Leon, whatever. But, like, I think this will be, like, welcome home Resident Evil fans now that the winters are fucking dead. (laughs) In my head, I... Yeah, sorry. Um, I reckon it's going to be Jake from Resident Evil 6. That dude had a great pair. I will tell you that much. (laughs) Really formative game that was for James. Interesting. Um, Okay. Nathan, you got any... 
Oh. Yes. Okay. If, if, if everyone else is going to swing. Go if, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really I'm really trying to test you boys with the pauses tonight. Now, if, if all y'all are going to swing for the fences, I, I will too. Um, I want something, some kind of big, sexy JRPG action. I wonder if, look, if we're swinging for the fences, I'll say Dragon Quest 12 or 13, whatever the next one is, 12 or 12? Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Just a little something, something. They've been teasing this for the past couple of years now, but we still haven't seen Squat, so. Cool. I don't, I don't yep. think it would be a huge swing to say that they'll be focusing on shit like that, being that I feel like the fact that they're at TGS this year mm-hmm. might mean something. I don't know what that means, but maybe focusing on a Japanese audience for this mm. for this state of play. I can, yeah, I can see that. Mm. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right, cool. Let's and go before find we cut. Out. Before we cut, one quick, one word answer. One word answer. Do we see any new first party reveals? Could it simply just be a splash, a splash logo? Yes. Yes. James? Oh, but, um, yeah, no. no. Nathan? No. Yeah. I'll go with you, Adam. I'll go yes. All right. Let's go. Let's go. uh, Let's find out. Let's go. Jump and uh, chat about it. Alrighty, we are here in the future. We have just uh, watched the PlayStation State of Play. Let's, uh, Nathan, James, let's talk through it. Uh, what do we both think of uh, the State of Play that we got this morning? I Who, who's like or okay, it's for James. Good. <laughs> What's for? It's for both of you. I, no, no, no. I, I just mean, who, who is the state of play for, like, oh, rhetorically yeah. in a way? Because it wasn't for me. And that's fine. James. Like, I think it was nice. There was a few, few nice things in there, but nothing to feed me. Yeah. Mm. Look, I mean, I wasn't blown away, but there were instances where I, I think it ranged from, like, eh, I don't give a shit to, oh, cool, mm. uh, which is a, a solid okay. array for a mm. state of play, I'd say. Mm. Okay. Mm. How'd you go, Zach? Uh, yeah, sure. It was a state of play, eh? Um, it was a state of play, eh? It was... <laughs> it was fine. It was, I mean, I had a quick quick scroll through, had a bit of a watch this afternoon. I didn't get a chance to watch it live. Um, yeah, not really that, you know, got me uh, going. But... Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, the big one at the at the end, sure. Uh, the one of the ones. Um, I was just going to interject quickly and and let you know Adam's initial thought as well. Just just one sentence. Yeah, he said overall it was a pretty solid showcase of what's to come in the next few months to a year. Mm. Good on you, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> we lost him in the time jump, but. He's we'll find another vortex. He's just playing up. He's yeah. he's just freezed to the corner again. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, th- I think for what you know, for what what it was, it was decent enough. Uh, I think it, it could have been a lot, uh, not quite as exciting. Um, mm. Maybe not had the finale that uh, we got, but yeah. I think it does. I know it, just, it feels like it's lacking something, though. But that's just my my opinion. I think we're just seeing the last of Sony's whole. We're not going to do much this year. Uh, like energy running out. Um, and then maybe once we get into next year, we start getting the the big hits mm. again. Uh, like I, I'm genuinely shocked that uh, Ghosts of what what's the new one called? Y- Yoti. I y- Yoti or something. Yeah, you're tied. Yeah, vaguely. Duolingo is failing me here, that. obviously. Uh, yeah, can, can we? It is yeah. Yotai. Is okay. Ghosts of Yotai. I'm quite surprised was here uh, because I think you know we said just moments ago that uh, two of us were convinced there wasn't going to be any big first party mm. sort of reveals here. So um, that is. A nice surprise. Um, obviously, as a huge Ghost of Tsushima fan, I'm very thrilled about this. So, um, you know, that's cool. But I do think the rest of it is just kind of mid-generation. Here's some games. 
see out the year, I guess. Uh, you know, and I think it just depends on if those things are your particular flavor of bullshit or not. So, mm. yeah, it's weird. Like, I mean, both Adam and I said yes that we 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 thought that PlayStation would uh, show off a first party game, but this is going to sound like a strange a strange thing to say, but um, I didn't expect it to be this. But also, I'm not surprised it's this because we've known about this, if that makes sense. Mm. So, you yeah. know, we didn't get anything, yeah. you know, we didn't get a new Naughty Dog game or a new uh, mm. Santa, not Santa, what are they called? Sony Santa Monica game. Um, you know, we got the one that we probably knew that was been in the works for a bit. So, yeah. Um, but I was expecting Death Stranding probably with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I guess that if it's it, yeah. doing its own mm-hmm. presentation, which got extended out to like seventy-five minutes or something, so they're yeah. probably gonna oh deal with that. Uh, on yeah. wait, whoops. Okay. No, I mean I only saw that news today, so right. I, I yeah. assume. Well, um, um, yeah, today in the future, yeah, 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 so, yeah time. <laughs> that is. It's Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. What did um. I'm trying to think about uh, what was in there that I think might might get Zach going. The Midnight Walk? Did that uh, do anything for you? Uh, eh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I did. I did kind of like Hell Is Us. I don't know why. Um, oh, oh yeah. didn't expect I am that from you. I'm visually cool, right? You. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Didn't expect that. I was saying uh, interesting. Nathan before we jumped on. It looks like uh, a Souls like and Death Stranding smashed together. And so mm. I am extremely happy. Uh, I, I think I saw somewhere like it's not going to have like a map or anything. It's not going to have quest markers. Like it's going for a very like cinematic, uh, hopefully mm. kind of vibe. Um, yeah, it's ticking all of my boxes. Definitely like the game I came away being like, oh, fuck yeah. Other than Ghosts of uh, that place that I've already forgotten. Yokai. And Adam also agrees with you that uh, Hell is Us really nailed it on the vibes front. There you go. Mm. Yeah. He, he, he whispered in my ear. Good He's good at whispering, Adam. bad boy. You know, so Nathan, where did he jump up? Oh, sorry. You know, I was going to say, as I'm playing the the Midnight Walk um, just again on the... Uh, but, but there's a fucking ad that's covering the video. Like, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't get past it. Like, you scroll past... The, it's like... Ingr- anyway. it, it, it moves with you? Yeah. No, yeah. it's literally just... It's, it's infused into the video, but it's like part of the website. I love that. It's bizarre. Anyway, synergy. Yeah. Game of the future. Hmm. You were gonna ask? Nathan, yes, Nathan, James. Nathan, you. Where were you? Yeah. Off? I think. Thank you, Zach. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry to jump all you fellas up there. Uh, we're very excited about this presentation, as you can tell. Uh, the one standout for me that I'll wax on about for 30 seconds is Lunar Remastered Collection. I'll look it out for a JRPG, and I don't really think that i got a big, sexy-looking new one, but that's fine, yeah. because I'm really pleased with this trend of bringing back, like, not just SNES era, but now, like, PS1, which is now retro mm. era JRPGs, which I never touched. I didn't have a PlayStation 1, bringing them into the new, uh, current era. So we've got uh, Silver Star Story which doesn't roll off the tongue, that's getting uh, ported alongside Eternal Blue. And I know that Silver Star Story was considered a JRPG classic, so I'll be excited to educate myself on that. It doesn't have the same uh, visual Janessa qua that some of the new like uh, Square Enix remasters of their old stuff look like, but it probably doesn't have that kind of budget. We'll take it. Hmm. Nice. Speaking of, uh, Zach... You, you you get around some Soul Reaver? That seems like something you'd be into. Hmm. I, hmm. I did back in the day. I did like Soul Reaver when, when I was, yeah, you know, when it when it first yeah. hit. But uh, I don't know. You've been a young lad. I did watch the trailer and I was like, yeah, sure. Like, I don't have time to play any of the, the new shit that comes out. Like, I'm not going to have time to go and play old hmm. shit I've already played. Um, good on them. That's fair. But... I don't know. I feel like this is something that people have wanted for quite a while, right? Mm, yes. They have. It's got like yes. a cult following for sure. But it does feel a little yeah. bit um, cheap. Like it's just a remaster okay. rather than a remake. Yeah, I get what you mean. Like it, it yeah. still kind of has that quality 
visually about it that it looks kind of like a relic. Mm. Mm. I fuck with that personally because I, I think that preservation of these things as they were, but maybe more like shined up as they were is the best form of game preservation mm. uh especially if we get like you know more modern day controls which is why i did with the bounty hunter remaster that they did earlier this year so i could you know i could fuck with this mm. i just don't know is this for new players though like do you reckon many, do you reckon many new people go out and go yeah it looks cool yeah, see, that's it's like, for thirty something people to go. Oh yeah, <laughs> I remember that Soul Reaver. Yeah, <laughs> um, but no, cool. It's it's good to good to see it come back because I know that people have been frothing it pretty hard. Uh, we also got uh, what did we get? Oh, the new Metro away. Uh, the new VR that actually has a release date. Um, and I really do wish that we would get a new Metro, uh, like a real one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is, um, yeah, it's cause I do, I do quite like that, that series. Yeah. Um, mm. we got a Dragon Age trailer for in a bit minutes. I didn't watch it cause it was a bit Ooh. too long, but, um, what do we, it was long. Yeah, it was. I just don't have any yeah. interest in uh, There's a lot of so. stuff going on with no context. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, I thought it was weird to show off, like, a boss fight where you were watching the health bar just get, like, plinked away at in a very unsatisfying way. Uh, so much that there had yes. to be, like, time cuts. And then it was still, like, three quarters full. And I was like, what are we What are we doing? <laughs> like, why is this still going? Real um, affair. Yeah. I also, I'll, I mean, I'll say it. I thought the art direction was kind of generic. Uh, like, and I'd, I'd, be, I'd been worried about this with this game from the glimpses of it that I'd seen, but actually seeing it in motion, like when the tentacle lady came out of the ground, I was like, oh, it's just fantasy. Like, I, I, I don't know. If it, if it mm. makes you feel any better as someone that's played the whole series, it's never had, it's never been able to define a visual identity for itself. Mm, it has true. always been trad fantasy for better and worse. Um, I think Inquisition was nice because it had a lot of, green mm -hmm. sparky shit happening it had a lot of green going through it but otherwise no it's got no identity yeah. sadly yeah mm. still looked all right kinda. speaking of fantasy games See. without identity by the way arcade chronicles this was a trailer <laughs> when it started i, I was like I zoned saw this. my eyes glazed over and then by the end of the trailer i was like do i want to fuck with this <laughs> like what what is this thing <laughs> uh it, it, it of this. the most generic fantasy thing in the world but i'm into it you know I'd be nervous about this. Arcade has been oh, yeah. oh, okay. Arcade, Interesting. Arcade is an MMO. Came out oh, over yeah. a decade ago. Hmm. Um, as soon as it left beta, it basically became a, a pay-to-win bot fest and sunk and disappointed a lot of people. And it got shoved around like three or four different developers was just handed around and oh, no one right. gave a shit about it. And I'd be worried that this is going to be handled carelessly because that was a mess. Um, we'll see. I'm I'm nervous. I laughed out loud when I saw it because yeah, <laughs> it's got a storied history behind it, and for them to give it another shot, poof. and yeah. in this showcase and with that footage, yeah. They, did you know they reused a lot of shots, like mm. the brawling one on one stuff? I'm like, so we're just going to see this yeah. one arena for half the trailer, are we? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. well, we shall see. James will fuck with it. Hey, look, I love giving things a go. You do. It's cute. He does. <laughs> um, I did like. Sorry, I did like. Uh, wrong, wrong phrase. I will say that seeing the new Alan Wake Two expansion trailer mm. makes me really want to finish that game. Like, I actually, properly sink, um, you know, the right amount of time into that game to to finish it. Because so what I've played so far, I, I do really, really quite like it, and I'm surprised I've not actually given myself the time but that looks like a very cool yeah. dlc um i you will really fuck with how that whole thing wraps up uh and if mm. this dlc i think puts a satisfying coda on that game's ending it will be just masterpiece happy days so mm. we love we love masterpieces here don't we you know what we don't love here Too at well played is uh playstation's recycling of games from a previous generation 
So Horizon Zero Dawn remastered, right? This thing looks... It's it's that meme that went around of uh, Aloy with the yassified filter where everything gets smoothed out. And now the whole game looks like that. <laughs> and I just don't understand what we're Rated doing. Rated T here. for teen. Um, Let's do I don't know. I don't know, man. It's bad mm. vibes. Didn't tell you though. I said they would they would only do one of one of that or days gone. That's true. And this and this would yeah. this would line up near the um the pro Leo thing. Oh yes, that too. Yeah. I, I said I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if it was like a launch pro title, but I think mm. it's like a week earlier. So I'm technically I'm wrong. Yeah. So that's all right. Near enough is good enough, as we say. It is. That's what we say here. <laughs> we do say. <laughs> Uh, cool. Anything else uh, that we want to talk about before we jump back to the uh, the podcast proper? Big shout outs to uh, Dino Crisis, which is coming to the Classics catalog. Oh, shit. Shout really? Out. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. And uh, I guess Last of Us Part 1 is coming to the main um, PS Yay. Plus game catalog if you've not played it, so... If you, if you somehow mm. missed it across three different generations, then <laughs> now's the time. Now's it's the never time. been a better time. That's yeah. it. Uh, Monster, Monster Hunter Wild, Scott Feb 28, 2025 oh, release right. date. Yeah. Fucking Capcom. Oh, yeah. Me. yeah, when I saw the Capcom presents, like it was the like, <gasps> and then, oh. I, yeah, I did. <laughs> no, no shade to Monster Hunter. Like that's a cool no. world. I, I, I get it. I just wanted, I want my Jill, you know? Mm. 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 I mean, it, it makes sense given that this has got a date. This ha- had a, had a date previously. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. Bummer. But did you know though, James? Did you I, um, know that actually most of these you can play on your Xbox? I saw this. <laughs> yes. Which uh, that's really cool. On, the five people who have Xboxes Xbox will love them. Uh, as as one of the comments. Uh, said that I saw State of Play on Game Pass or something like that. Uh, <laughs> fuck, I know. Yeah, like apparently this is a thing that they both do. Like both major publishers will uh, sort of like tweet these graphics after the, each other's showcase, uh, which uh, sure, I don't know. I find all of it very petty. Um, it is I, don't very know, petty. I would find it equally distasteful if um, PlayStation did it. So It's weird, isn't it? It is. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I wonder how many people had to be fired to afford those games on Xbox. I know. I know. Yeah. But anyway, this is about the state of play. Uh, I, I will go out on. I, I. I. We kind of vaguely glossed over it, but like Ghost of Yotai. I'm actually like that is. I'm so beyond thrilled. I know that it's maybe not the most popular with Zach. I guess as a as a series. Or did you I like Ghost of Tsushima? I did. Oh, that's I thought nice, it was um, yeah. I didn't really like all the fluff that you know, all the all the yeah, Ubi the open, open world, world fluff. But mm-hmm. it was Ubisoft stuff. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was good enough. Yeah, I think it had a pretty yeah. good story. The the combat was relatively satisfying. Yeah, um, I'm yeah. just curious what they've learnt for the sequel, and I think that because that first game is so much about masculinity and honor i wonder having a woman as the lead what that does to what that world is trying to say about whatever um Fuck, and it seems sweet, like you get a pet wolf so sweet baby like, let's fucking go yeah isn't it isn't that who, who's sorry that? what was that what is, it is that what the I'm kids like, say these days oh isn't there, there, there's that company that's um I don't know, like work consultants or whatever the fuck the people say that oh, or whatever. Yeah. 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 Sweet baby uh, rays. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so this anyway. uh, Ghost of Yotai is a sequel to mm-hmm. Ghost of Tsushima. It takes place 300 years after the events of the first game. Um, I don't know if it's a direct sequel, though. Like, I, I get the vibe you can play it. I think they've just said that the ghost of will be like an anthology type title, yeah. so they can kind of be well, a bit be more cool. flexible with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this is focusing on a new tank. protagonist, Atsu, 
Uh, this will mm. this new game will feature a new suite of locations as well uh, as new gameplay tweaks, as hinted at by the dual building of Katana. Uh, no release info. No release info outside of 2025. Mm. I think it'll make 2025. They've been cooking this for a while. Yeah, I feel like this one doesn't change. It doesn't look like it's changed much. So no. whether you can reuse, Which, not reuse, but, you know, you can use that to your advantage when you're making a sequel, right? Like you've got the yeah, bones they're obviously there, quite so you, comfortable with the engine. Yeah. 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 Um, although I will say in terms of changes, there was a scene where there's like a field of wild horses and that got me fucking amped. So, mm. you know, it's incremental like, improvements like is all I really need from this. The little things. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the little things, Nathan. <laughs> uh Good stuff. All right. Anything else before we head back to um, where we were? Uh, A link to the past, you know, because of Zelda earlier. Gotcha. Or later, whatever. Yeah. All right. We're going to go back to the uh, podcast. (laughs) What a good chat. Uh, (laughs) I'll tell you what probably will be at this thing. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered. Uh, which seems to have leaked uh, from an uh, ESRB rating, I, I believe. Um, this also coincides with uh, Days Gone remaster uh, apparently leaking as well. Um, are we in hell? <laughs> See, yeah, I don't think we get both of these. At, I mean, I, I know we've just talked about like what's happened at TGS, but I can't see this. Can't see both being announced. I think yeah, PlayStation has to know that it's a fucking joke at this point. It must. Like, yeah. they're not fucking stupid, are they? I almost can see them happening at the... S- nah. I can see both of them happening. Not Because so Last of Us happened because of the show. They had something mm. to do cross-promotion with. Horizon no longer has that. Like, the show, for all intents and purposes, seems to be shit-canned. Days Gone is a dormant IP that they're doing nothing with. So I can see them doing, like, a double feature of, like remaster of this we've also got a remaster you know, of I'm this i'm on the lego horizons hype bro i feel yeah. like you just went down to the under the rug mate i forgot that existed to be honest no i'm not that keen like it's a baby fucking, game on a baby weekend console, at burnings so. at the moment mate <laughs> just yeah. carry all these fucking old games just <laughs> no yeah no I, I don't like it either um, I, I, I think we'll get horizon i think that that'll be a Mm-hmm. I, I haven't read any of the news other than like the headlines, but I reckon that'll that might be a a, a PS5 Pro launch title. Sure, whatever that means. Will they mention the, the PS5 Pro? <laughs> yeah, are they gonna? Will there be a thing at the start that says all games are running on PS5 Pro? Is that uh, gonna be like a? Because you, you have not. to mention it, yeah. Yeah, because no. like they just then we shouldn't be fucking talking about this. We literally just talked about it. We did. We You'll just talked out. about it. So it's all good. Um, while we are talking about PlayStation, though, uh, and their weird choices around hardware, Adam, can you explain to mm. me this ugly PS5 thing? Sorry, you're going to have to rephrase that. You've taken the wind out of my sails. Uh, yep. Yeah, so they're doing a range of... Oh, fuck yourself. They're doing a range <laughs> of... I agree. Uh, limited edition With consoles me. and accessories. for James, no. you don't get to talk. Um around the 30th anniversary of PlayStation. So obviously that being the PS1, they're going back to the the gray colorway with the the colorful little PlayStation logo, which they should never have gotten rid of. The the colorful little mm. logo should have been standard through all of the 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 generations. But so yeah, essentially they're doing a PS5 Pro bundle, which is going to be just unfucking believably expensive because it has the Pro, a controller, the vertical stand, sure. Um, the the con- the controller charger dock uh, and a dual sense edge. So like, and the disc drive cover, wa- right? And the disc drive cover, yeah. So it's like twelve hundred dollars for the console. Mm. That controller is almost four hundred dollars. The the dock is forty. The vertical stand is forty. Like it's gonna be like, yeah, it's gonna be ex- fucking expensive. Uh, they're, they're doing a slim to, bundle. Yeah, the li- twelve. Limited- 12,300 units. Yeah, which is fucking yep. bizarre. Like, why? I get it that it, it, it can be limited, yeah, but that's know. way too limited. Like, then you get... 
Well, know. it's going to be a scalper's fucking wet dream. Like that's Absolutely. we all know it, that's going to happen. But yeah, so, they're doing a slim bundle as well. Uh, they're also doing a PlayStation Portal specifically for James. Uh, they're doing a DualSense Edge standalone and as well just the regular DualSense, which those won't be seemingly as limited as the 12,300 units. But yeah, it's all themed around the PS1. They look sexy. James is... I just think the gray is not all that appealing. Uh, I, I, I will say I like I the controller because it has like the color on the buttons again. And I really do appreciate that touch. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to go like third Z's on this and I'll take the, uh, the portal <laughs> <laughs> and you can have the rest of the garbage. I mean, uh, sure. We'll, I'll, we'll still both need to take out a loan, but yeah, I mean, sure. But, but they're not bundled Shared together. Pain, at least. Like you can buy the portal separately. Oh, true. The portal is yeah, the only thing that doesn't come in the PS5 Pro. Like, uh, mm, right, right, right. Yeah, I thought Never it did at first too because that picture kind of said it's a bundle. The picture makes had, it look, had, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, so pre-orders I, are actually I mean, now. So when you're listening to this, yeah. the pre-orders are probably done. It's probably sold out. It's probably fucking on eBay for... It's on eBay price. already, man. 100%. Is it really? 100%. Hmm. No, I mean, um, as of... In the... This yeah, is how say, time like, works. Oh well, no! I was I was going to say that is broken the concept is, of time. This potty that is ambitious <laughs> for like some people to already have um, listings yeah. up. But um, Adam's in the future. I did mind. say last potty. What was the last podcast? I said if if they do that um, OG PlayStation Grey, I will fucking buy it. But I would you buy the. Say that. I would buy this. I would buy it and sell the DualSense Edge. Um, mm, I'll buy it. I'll buy it because, okay. but there's no fucking way I'm I'm getting one right. <laughs> Mm. These will sell out way before I'll even fucking get it into my cart, mate. Before I even loaded the web page. I think controllers you'll have a decent enough chance with, but eh. consoles probably not. Mm. I say go hard or go home. Tell you what, to uh to afford this bundle, you might need to rob some wealthy people in an alley after they've seen a show with their young son. Jesus Christ! Go on, go on, go crash and burn. As, oh. So speaking of Batman, um, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, uh, the, apparently Rocksteady is working on a new Batman. Not really much of anything to talk about here yet, but according to um, uh, Sh- Special Nick, uh, I guess is is how that is said. Um, this is a game that is now in development right. after the shitty uh, Suicide Squad experience that we all had, and Sony is apparently making a play for some sort of exclusive deal. So. Mm. Oh we'll boy, that's in, an uphill battle. We'll see it in what five years, six years. Yeah, mm. that is a that is an uphill battle for for them on multiple fronts. Not just because like Arkham Knight was, you know, there was the whole Batmobile thing, but coming off Suicide Squad, man, like that has to be. Mm. Yeah, those pitch meetings would be interesting. Mm. Yep. Let's not make a bad game. I mean, it's, there's your pitch. I mean, I think that's <laughs> Don't maybe the up. baseline for <laughs> yeah. every pitch meeting, but yeah. this will be a uh, PS6 game then, I'm guessing. No, uh, oh, fuck at, at the rate we're going. Yeah. We love that. Ridiculous. Mm. Mm. Um, is there any other news that anyone wants to... Can I throw one random one in that I don't really care about, but I think it's hilarious, is that Like a Dragon has a new entry mm. in the franchise coming up that is called Like a Dragon Yakuza... Oh, no, sorry. Like a Dragon... Fuck, I fucked it. Like a Dragon Pirate Yakuza in Hawaii. And I just love their <laughs> naming conventions because they make no fucking sense. Perfect. It's, yeah, that's it. That's Remember all I wanted to... we hear from the man who has no name. Yeah, it's like... Hit him out of the park. Woo! Right? God damn. You love to see it. Yeah, that's it. You do love to see it. Just a very, very quick news. We're not even going to talk about it, but Nathan, uh, Witchfire is on Steam now. Yes, it's uh, done its uh, Steam Early Access launch. Uh, They've done a fair few overhauls with this launch, apparently, to try and refocus its single-player ambitions. And uh, now it's roadmapped for a 9- to 12-month development time before full release. Stuff. I'm definitely keen to um yeah sink some time in uh, at some point. I am too. All right. Quite like it. Head to the uh the offies, the off topics. Offers. Absolutely. 
The offies. The offie toffees. Uh, all right. Who's watched Red? Fucking done anything they want to share? I will quickly go through a couple things. Started the new ah, Netflix yeah. TV show, Chaos. <laughs> Has anyone seen that? Anyone oh, yeah. interested in watching that? That's the Jeff Goldblum, kind of the retelling uh, of the, yeah, yeah. the Greek gods and myths. Wait, isn't Pretty... that apparently dog shit? I've, I've yeah. heard bad things about it. Really? I've only heard good things about it. Yeah, right. There you go. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum you rubs it away. I Me think too. it's bad vibes. Yeah. What's that? Sorry. Jeff Goldblum. Really bad vibes. What, why is that? Yeah. Uh, allegations. Oh, Google mm-hmm. it. He, Interesting. He, he, I've not seen the allegations, but he gives me date rapey vibes and oh. it just, yeah. Something Allegedly. Just, <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, vibes. Vibes. Yes. Yeah. Vibes only. I'm not going to touch that. Well, um, the Jurassic show World is legal team on our ass now. <laughs> <laughs> the show is it's fine Any publicity, it, baby. It, it's entertaining. I'll uh, I'll give it that. I also went and watched I uh, speak no evil. Is that I think? Or, oh yeah, uh, mm-hmm. the James McAvoy version. He is a phenomenal. Like just he sucks you right in just with his p- performance. The film was fine as uh nathan and i discussed in our lovely little uh brunch but um yeah it was, I, I found it very very slow so this is the film where uh, i don't know how to say it without sort of giving it away but james mcavoy invites a couple or a family Couples back to on his, holiday meet yeah yeah and then they go hang out back at mcavoy's farm and you know, shit goes Fuck. whack. Yeah. yeah, I feel like um, I've seen this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he is, yeah, he, he's a big boy too in that film. Uh, he's a, mm. yeah, he just has just a great face for it. Um, it, like, the, when it kind of hits that, that peak and it comes, you know, it comes down on the roller coaster, it's, it's pretty entertaining. It's pretty good, but it takes way too long, I think, to get there. Um, mm. Yeah, I probably would give it a six and a half. Uh, yeah right. Yeah. As far and as adaptations uh, goes, that seems okay. Yeah, and just very very quickly, uh, got out the disc wallet and I ran uh, Anna through Alien vs Predator. Uh, the other. Let me chuck this classic on, babe. You're gonna love it. <laughs> and guess what? Jesus. She, she did. She did. she did like it. Oh, that she... first movie is very entertaining. It is, it is, it is. It is. Yeah. And what was the consequence of you watching? <laughs> she was Alien like, let's Predator watch. Stack. She's, she's like, let's watch. I want to watch Alien vs Predator 2. And I was like, I want to watch <laughs> AVP. Do you though? Requiem. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> you don't. You don't. Trust me. She's like, no, no, no. I do. I'm like, can we watch something else? I'm like, anything. Your choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we we'll started. Just look watching... out the window for an hour and a half if yeah. you really want to. <laughs> now, that wasn't in the disc wallet. So uh, thankfully, it was on Disney Plus. Disney Prime, no, no, Disney Plus is right. Plus. Um, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, we got about twenty-five minutes in, and she's like, nah, she's fair. like, this film is shit." I was like, <laughs> "Correct." I did tell you, so we turned it off, and I think we just went to sleep. Actually, no. <laughs> that's the better <laughs> of the two options, to be fair. Yeah. And I watched the I watched the Brownlow on my phone, so there you go. Oh yeah, shout outs. That's the AVP. Mm-hmm. Any of the Blues boys win a brown low? Absolutely, mate. They are Carlton captain. You know that, don't you? Don't you? Or is that a loaded question? I, I, no, I don't. Yeah, the Carlton captain. Sports abs- talk he, for our international oh. listeners. He uh, broke the record for the most votes. Got oh. 45 votes, which is actually Is that because they're insane. also breaking the record for like not winning? No. No records were broken. Are uh, there? They voted for him out of pity. <laughs> Yeah, he had a. He had a we got to give him something. He had a really good year. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Very, very good. I think the. Uh, the no, actually, we, we don't have time. I don't want to. Don't, don't open. Take it back. Don't no, I jar. take it back completely. I apologize. So the last highest number of votes was thirty six, no, and, no, yeah, no, and no. he got uh, no. he got forty five. So big shout outs to the big boy. He's, big a, he's a he's a big fan. Should get him on the pod. Maybe we will. 
Jesus Christ. I want to get a temperature check of Rings of Power if any oh, of you boys are yeah. up to date. No, because, no. James, I feel like we discussed season one and yeah. I was like, yeah, largely I enjoyed it, but mm-hmm. it was in large parts a bit boring. Um, mm-hmm. This season is completely the fucking opposite. I have been having a wonderful time uh, and I'm really digging seeing more of Sauron just get to be Sauron mm. rather than just kind of like a who is it kind of yeah. deal. Um, I like now that the cat's out of the bag and that actor can just kind of eat up scenes mm-hmm. being a manipulative prick. So I'm really enjoying it. Are you enjoying it, James? I, I am. I don't think I'm enjoying it as much as season one. Uh, I think what people sort of in your camp found boring, I found quite enthralling. Uh, and in, in turn, like season two is... I think like a total crowd pleaser. It mo- it moves much more like the Peter Jackson films. Uh, I think that it is doing a lot of things I'm really enjoying. Like I'm having a good time. Period. There is no asterisk to that. But I do prefer the more like glacial, methodical, overly self indulgent pacing of season one. Uh, because I think season two so far has been like th- there was there are moments. There was one moment in particular where Gladriel does some like slow motion arrow horse shit where I went like. Mm-hmm. This is just a Paul W.S. Anderson movie. And, like, that's fine, because I like those movies. Um, but it, it, it's very obvious that I think they've taken on some criticism from season one and tried to make this next season a bit, like, snappier. Um, and yeah. I think it is good at that. It's a it's a nice change of pace in, in a way. I just hope season three goes back to being a, a balance would be better for me, I think. We'll see. We'll see. We will. But I am Does very excited for this up? big battle finale, so... Just yeah. make you want to play the games again because I did see a tweet somewhere that um, Rings of Power or something made someone go back and play Shadow of War. Oh, yeah. oh. I've installed Shadow of War whilst watching this season, but I've yet to launch it. Yeah, hmm. I can see warning too because they are very, very closely linked, um, particularly season two. Um, so yeah, I can see getting the getting the itch. Me personally, no, but I can I can understand it. Hmm. Mm. 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 I uh I watched Moulin Rouge, uh the, the Baz Luhrmann film. On Does anyone purpose, have any Oh, okay, I see. This is how this is gonna go. <laughs> Don't enjoy I'm Baz just... Luhrmann, but go off. Okay. I I had I had only casually absorbed part of it when I was like, I don't know, primary school level James, because I think that that was back when it sort of rolled around. Um, and so I had like a vague memory of Nicole Kidman, but that was basically it. Uh, coming to it as an adult, I like, I thought it was tremendous. I, I, I kind of thought it was like really, really cool. Nobody makes movies like him. And I think that that can be both a compliment True. and an insult. Um, so it just depends on, I think, your your taste. But like genuinely deranged editing uh like uh, like i've never seen before like i i have never seen a movie like moulin rouge and i probably never will again um but i had an excellent time i think nicole kidman is great i think ewan mcgregor maybe his best performance uh, i've ever seen what a uh, guy yeah what a do why does he not sing more he sings so well I, uh, it was just so nice um cried at the end actually i cried multiple times throughout I had a good time <laughs> yeah, right. love it yeah there you go. Now tears yeah, of joy, eh? Crying. Uh, well, some joy, some sad. It's a tragedy, man. Sounds like it. All right. So I was going to say, speaking of crying, so Zach, I've already, I've already, I, I won't wax on this one because I've already indulged it with Zach. But uh, there's a new documentary on Disney Plus I watched called "The Contestant." It's about a Japanese game show from 1998. Sounds fascinating. Uh, that, Yes, it is. It's about a dude that gets locked in an apartment by himself with nothing and has to survive, and he's locked in there for a year and three months, completely isolated. Oh, it's a Mr. Beast he challenge. loses his marbles. Yeah, exactly. Well, yes, correct. That's part of the reason why this has come out. This is a sort of a precursor. It's presented as a precursor to like reality television because this preempted Big Brother and The Truman Show. Yada yada. This was one, and and at one point they even like live streamed this on webcams. Um, yeah, I haven't right. mentioned the fact that he's naked this entire time. So because this is Japan, <laughs> they had to live edit him whilst they're live streaming because you know show no wee wee mm. on the PPTV. So yeah, it's uh, it's I cried a lot during this one actually. 
Um, because this is oh. this is just a dude that's been exploited for for, uh, for for the sake of reality television and a laugh because it's Japanese. It's a Japanese game show, so of course it's all edited to be laughed at. It's all funny and silly and weird because that's how Japanese game shows are presented. But of course we get interviews with this guy who's still around. He's still kicking, um, talking about how like his his psyche is still like fundamentally completely shattered from that yeah, experience right. and a carry like you won't the, the twists and turns on how they produce this game show and, and how they keep him in the dark and how it become like just an absolute phenomenon in Japan because there was nothing like this that was so boundary breaking. Uh, and it's really, really fucked up. And uh, yeah, I just sobbed like a little child at the end, but it was good. Can we, can you give them the little bit of the pitch that you gave me? Like how oh. he survives? Or is oh that, or, yeah, okay, that that's right. So I have missed one important thing. So as I said, he's in this he's in this uh, apartment by himself. He's got no cooking utensils or anything like that. He's got a gas stove. He's got a table. He's got a camera. He's got a phone for emergency calls. Uh, again, emergency calls. Not calling anyone. He's completely isolated. But he's got a stack of postcards and a stack of magazines. Because if anyone is read any magazines from the early 2000s going back into the 90s would remember even in Australia there were competitions in magazines for anything you could imagine whether it be dog food whether it be I don't know like a, a, a your supply of coca-cola toilet rolls who who knows whatever he has to make uh, one million dollars in yen worth of competition prizes in order to win this challenge uh, but that's also how he has to survive. So he just ends up eating dog food and stuff like that because he's he's having to rely on winning competitions to survive. And because he's not winning competitions, they're just sliding in crackers under the door and stuff to make sure he doesn't die and just like rushing in doctors and that if he's having heart palpitations and stuff like that. Which we've got to keep him alive somehow, but we're not going to make it too easy on him. It's traumatic stuff, but... Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, all right. Very that well last... presented documentary. That last tidbit has has my yeah. attention well enough where I'll 100% it's, watch this. I, I mean, there's so many fucked up James. twists to it that I forget that that's one of the most fucked up of them, but it's there's just so much. Um, but this is this is hot off the press. This has hit Disney Plus in the last three days or so, so hmm. I mean, pretty good. The contestant. Yeah, right. Thank you. Wowee. All right. 2000s two, movie of the week? 2000s film of the week. I've got one for you. He's got I, one. Really hope I haven't done this one before. All right. I don't think I have. Do I go the long synopsis or do I go give, give you the short one? Your choice, mate. Dealer's choice. That's it. Evan suffers blackouts during significant events of his life. As he grows up, he finds a way to remember these lost memories and a supernatural way to alter his life by reading his journal. Why does that ring a bell? Mm, I'm not going to be much help on this one. No, I am. Yeah, you got to give us a clue now. Paddle. Okay. Let me read you the long one. Uh, no, that was the that. short one. Yeah, right. Yeah. How do you... I'm still just processing that hurtful comment. Uh, all right, so... I won't give Are you, you a... Vamping? What's happening here? <laughs> I won't give you... No, I'm just trying to try Picture to the... this. New York City. <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm going to give you a clue. <laughs> But it's not related. It's not a clue related to the movie. So I'm hoping that you can get it. Oh There's an Aussie rock band with the same name. Aussie rock band has probably been around for 25, uh, 20, 20, 25 years. <laughs> Popular, heavyish, hard rock band. It's. <laughs> I love that the only Australian you know, all the rock names band coming I to mind is not appropriate. I'm thinking like all Spider I've... Bait, and then I, I was like, nah, Parkway, no, Parkway, no, no, just all I've got is Rogue down. Traders. Three doors down, they're Canadian, mate. All right, <laughs> it's it's starring starring Ashton Kutcher. Ah, oh, Butterfly Effect. I yeah. thought Butterfly Effect was I, the first one so I thought of, and I was like, it it's was, not that. 
Same. Was it was the very, the very first, first one I thought yeah, of too. Yeah, but I was so like, it wasn't I that bad? That's... Wasn't that bad of a clue? Was it, you dogs? It was Butterfly the journal bit that threw me. I don't remember though. the journal. Mm. Yeah, I don't either. Shout out oh, to Road yeah. Traders, though. I don't know why that was the only <laughs> band that hit my head, but I was like, sure. All right. I remember you guys Manly had to explain with... that Rogue yeah. Traders was a band to me about this time last year around the release of Warhammer 40k <laughs> Rogue Trader. I was like, oh, what the fuck are you guys on about? And then I, think I remember it was like, that. Oh, voodoo Child, remember? I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> like, remember it's got Natalie Bassa. Bass- <laughs> <laughs> it's on um, it's on ABC iView if you want to watch that. And with that, oh, yeah. uh, that's a left twist yeah. for that one. 34% yeah, Rotten Tomatoes. But uh, yeah, there you go. Holly Valance is like an anti vaxxer now, I think. Sorry, I was thinking oh. about women from that era of Australia. Oh, and, that, uh, that, just, that checks that's out. A, that, yeah. That, that's a shame. Is it? It is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> she that was not good in, uh, in Dead or Alive. Uh, <laughs> no, no, she was not. But nobody was good was in Dead or Alive. Anyone? <laughs> and yet, Dead or Alive was good. So this is. Oh, you can't be fucking serious. <laughs> This has been your hot James take. Let's do a VHS on Dead I was or Alive. Gonna, oh, yeah, we should do like a retro. Let, let's do it. I'm down for that. Of I haven't all, seen that film in all fact, the but... uh, fighting game adaptations. We'll do Street mm. Fighter. We'll do Tekken. We'll do oh, yeah. Street Mortal, Street Mortal, Fighter. Uh, too Tekken, much Mortal Kombat. Yes. Um, God, the Tekken movie is. Did we do a VHS on the new Mortal Kombat, or did I imagine that? We did. We no. did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Did we write? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Here you go. I, I think it was just me and Ash. Oh, yeah. That, right. That okay. Yeah. Not a good thing. Interesting. We also interviewed <laughs> I the... parts of it. it. We interviewed the director. Oh, <laughs> yeah. In costume. Oh, all right. Yeah. All Ash, right. Ash dressed up as Scorpion and interviewed them. <laughs> <laughs> Look how surprised <laughs> James is. <laughs> all right. Get over here. Let's, let's wrap it up. Um, go on, then. Uh, go on. Yes, thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Well Played DLC podcast. You can check out Nathan's Zelda review on the website and check out all the other content. Hopefully, you got what you wanted from the state of play, uh, and hopefully, TGS brings you lots of treats and whatnot that you're keen. Is anyone hoping to see anything else from TGS? I don't, I don't know if there's any other showcases or something, but I just hope everyone has a good time. I That's just lovely. Want more That's RPGs, kind. man. Just what we need. All right. That's what we need. Have a great weekend, and uh, we will see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Yes.